Welcome to worship. Good to be with you for worship today. This is Palm Sunday weekend in which we uh, begin the celebration of Holy Week and Jesus' final leg of his journey to the cross where he suffered and died to take away our sin. Preparing our hearts for the triumphant resurrection on Easter morning. For our service today, we're going to be following the service of the word, page 38 in Christian worship. We're going to begin our service with our opening hymn, hymn number four. It's a setting of Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, you mighty gates. We'll sing verse one and verses four and five. of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him, and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore let us confess our sins to him, and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you, and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sins and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child, 
May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. We praise you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, as he was acclaimed by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. So may we always hail him as our King and follow him with perfect confidence who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First lesson for today recorded in the book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. The Lord gives us reasons to rejoice. Our King is coming. He comes to bring peace to his people. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. He is humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow will be taken away and he will proclaim peace to the nations. His kingdom will extend from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. This is God's word. The verse of the day from John chapter 12, verse 23. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Second lesson is recorded in the Apostle Paul's letter to the Christians in Philippi. Chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. The Son of God made himself our servant to free us from the guilt of sin and the fear of death. Indeed, let this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Though he was by nature God, he did not consider equality with God as a prize to be displayed, but he emptied himself by taking the nature of a servant. When he was born in human likeness, and his appearance was like that of any other man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is God's word. We continue with our next hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty, hymn 133.
This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. God's word for today, the focus of our sermon, is the gospel account of Palm Sunday, recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, telling them, Go to the village ahead of you. Immediately you will find a donkey tied there along with her colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you are to say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king comes to you, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their outer clothing on them, and he sat on it. A very large crowd spread their outer clothing on the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them out on the road. The crowds who went in front of him and those who followed kept shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of our Lord. Parades are a regular feature of some of our area celebrations. Maybe you've been to some of the big parades in downtown Milwaukee. They had to cancel the St. Patrick's Day parade because of the concerns about the coronavirus, but hopefully Milwaukee and, and other communities will still be able to have parades in the coming months. Maybe as soon as Memorial Day, hopefully by the 4th of July. Small cities and towns sometimes have parades as part of the celebration of their, their history and their heritage. They can be pretty entertaining with marching bands and, and floats and unusual cars and, and other vehicles, different kinds of performances and entertainment. They can be a good way to promote businesses and, and organizations. They can help build community pride Think about the different perspectives that people have when they're at a parade. Maybe you're alongside the parade route, in a lawn chair, cheering for somebody you know who's marching in the parade. Maybe you just pop by for a minute to see what all the fuss is about, but you're not really that interested, so you just go on your way. Or maybe you're in the parade. Maybe you're one of those people who's the center of attention, waving to the crowds as you pass by. Maybe you're the very last entry in the parade and, and you have to wait a long time before you even start moving. There are all kinds of different perspectives on the parade. We can imagine similar perspectives today when we look at what happened on Palm Sunday. How do you picture it? How do you picture Jesus' triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem? Well, imagine the perspective of, of one of his 12 disciples. As one of the 12, you have a, a closer personal connection to Jesus than anybody else there. Privately, away from the crowds that often followed Jesus, he taught you and the other 12 about his life and his mission. And over the last number of weeks, Jesus has been preparing you for this particular trip to Jerusalem. It's going to be different. It's going to be different than the other trips to Jerusalem that you've taken before. Clearly, something big is going to be happening. 
As one of the twelve, you're essentially in the parade with Jesus as you travel to Jerusalem. You see the crowds start to gather along the roads, joining in the parade behind you, coming out to meet you. You watch as people cut down their palm branches, take off their outer clothing, and lay them on the road in front of Jesus. It's like they're rolling out the red carpet for a celebrity. They're, they're treating him like a, a political hero coming to take charge. You just kind of get to soak it up, this, this amazing event. You maybe have goosebumps and, and probably cheering along with the crowds of people. Everything really seems to be falling into place, just like Zechariah the prophet said. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Your king is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. He is humble and is riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. You know and you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and the Son of David. So Jerusalem really is the place where he should come the place where he should come and rule over his people. It's a spectacular parade for the eyes and the ears. But in the back of your mind, you remember the words that Jesus told you, predicting what was going to happen in Jerusalem. You might not want to believe it, but it's hard to ignore. Jesus had told you, look, we are going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and experts in the law, and they will condemn him to death. They will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock, flog, and crucify him. On the third day, he will be raised. Step out of the shoes of one of the twelve disciples and Put yourselves into the shoes of one of the other people in the crowd. They're worshiping Jesus, shouting your praises to him. Obviously, you know something about him, even if you aren't one of his close, personal friends. Maybe you heard the unbelievable news that he raised his friend Lazarus from the dead in the town of Bethany, just a few miles away from Jerusalem. Maybe you've heard about some of the other miracles that he's done. Maybe you've caught wind of, of how he debates the religious leaders and, and he tells them how misguided they are in their understanding of God. A lot of people love Jesus and, sadly, a lot of people hate Jesus. But you are here to praise him. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You believe he is the promised son of David. You believe he's the one that the Lord talked about when he said to King David a thousand years ago, when your days are complete and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up after you your seed who will come from your own body. I will establish his kingdom. He will build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. Or maybe you're in the crowd, but you aren't praising Jesus. You can see him, just like everybody else can see him, but you don't get it. Either you don't know anything about him, or you just don't care. This man clearly has a great reputation with the people, but maybe Maybe you're just a visitor to Jerusalem. Maybe you're a, a merchant who has just arrived in the city. Maybe you're a religious skeptic. Who is this, you ask? Or maybe in the back of your mind, you're thinking more like, who does this guy think he is? The faith-filled answer comes back from the excited worshipers. This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Some people might be there to cheer Jesus, but that's not why you're there. After all, there was something bigger going on in Jerusalem than Jesus. It was Passover time. 
It was time to celebrate how God had freed the Israelites from slavery in Egypt almost 1,500 years ago. You don't realize it, but the Passover celebration actually helps to focus your attention on Jesus instead of turning your attention away from Jesus. God's original instructions about the Passover are recorded in Exodus chapter 12. Tell the entire Israelite community that on the tenth day of this month, they are to take a lamb or a young goat for themselves, according to their father's households, one lamb per household. Your lamb must be unblemished, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or the goats. You are to keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembly of the Israelite community is to slaughter the lambs at sunset. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where they eat the lamb. For on that night I will pass through the land of Egypt, says the Lord. I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both people and animals. Against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Palm Sunday was four days before the Passover celebration. It was the day when they picked out the unblemished lambs that were going to be slaughtered for the Passover meal. In the Passover, the lamb had to die so that the people would be spared. The Lord said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The Lamb of God was coming to Jerusalem with one goal in mind. He would be sacrificed for the sins of the world. Now we can't really put ourselves in Jesus' shoes and, and, and see his perspective in the parade, but we can, we can try to imagine a little bit. The crowds are all around you, but you're used to crowds. You hear their shouts of praise ringing through the air. The twelve that you chose to follow you are there by your side. They are eager, maybe a little too eager, to march forward, not really understanding what is going to happen in the week that lay ahead of them. The time has come for you to face those who will act out of ignorance and condemn you to die. The teachers of the people have opposed you because they will not believe that you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. They want to get rid of you. Up until now, it hasn't been the right time, but soon it will be. The time has come for the Son of David to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. The time has come for the Son of God to be found guilty of blasphemy. The time has come for the Lamb of God to shed his blood, to pay for the sins of the world, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The Apostle Peter writes in his first epistle, You know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life, handed down to you from your forefathers, not with things that pass away, such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like a lamb, without blemish or spot. Jesus watched as the city of his ancestor, King David, drew closer and closer. And with every passing moment, his horrible suffering on the cross also drew closer and closer. The Lamb of God went willingly because he loved you because his Father loves you. So praise him, just like the crowds that day. Shout, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. He is your King. He is the Lamb of God who sacrificed his life to pay for your sin and to make peace 
between you and God. Amen. Now the peace of God which goes beyond our understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join together now in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join our hearts in prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the King of heaven and earth. We join the first Palm Sunday worshipers in praising and glorifying you for coming to this earth to be our Savior. Though you are one with God the Father and Lord of all, you humbled yourself and became one with us. Thanks be to you for living a life of perfect conformity to God's holy law in our place. Praise be to you for being obedient to death, even death on a cross, to redeem us from sin. Cause our voices to blend with those who sang your praises as you rode into Jerusalem. Move us to confess you before others as our Lord. Help us proclaim the message of peace and forgiveness to people of all nations. Use us to assure all people that your blood has cleansed them from sin and set them free from slavery to sin, death, and the devil. Move us to dedicate all we are and all we have to your glory. Lord Jesus, you are king over all the earth. Bless the nations of this world with wise rulers and good government. Let peace prevail. Grant success to the businesses and industries of our land to serve for the common good. Cause all employers to be honest and fair-minded and all employees to be diligent and faithful. Look with favor on our nation's schools. Be with those who teach and those who learn. Comfort the sick and the afflicted with the assurance of your care and protection. Strengthen the faith of those who are dying. And merciful Lord and Savior, you have promised to be with your people everywhere in all circumstances of life. May the assurance of your abiding presence and your loving care comfort and sustain your servant Ken Barassa, who has just undergone emergency surgery. We ask that you would remove the anxiety and fear from his heart and lead him and his family and friends to rest all their confidence in you. We ask that you would bless the work that the surgeon has done and be with Ken as he recovers and fill him and his family with an abiding thankfulness for all your blessings. We also ask you now, Lord, to hear us as we bring you our private prayers. Dear Savior, as we walk with you this week toward Calvary, keep us focused on your purpose for coming into this world and on our calling to spread this wonderful message of salvation. Hear us for your mercy's sake. And in our Savior's name we also pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll continue with our next hymn. Uh, the hymn is called The Lamb. It's hymn 714 from the Christian Worship Supplement. God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth, 
protect and comfort us in all temptation, and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, now go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Good to worship with you today and rejoice in the work of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. May God continue to bless you as you journey with your Savior to the cross during this holy week. God's blessings.